Hello again and welcome back to our course on Windows 10. In this section we're going to look at power options and power saving. Power saving issues are particularly important if you're using a battery powered device such as a laptop and it's important to understand that you can significantly extend the life of a laptop battery by using its power frugally, shall we say carefully. This can include things like switching off or reducing the brightness of the display. I'm going to talk about these in more detail in just a moment but in this section first of all I'm going to look at power saving options in general. I'll then talk about the use of the power button on your device, the on off switch if you like. We'll look at power plans and their advanced settings and finally we'll look at creating your own power plan. As I said just now the screen brightness on your device is one of the elements that's going to greatly affect the use of power. Even if your device is plugged into a main supply, you'll still use more electricity if the screen is brighter than it needs to be. So particularly if the ambient light where you're working is quite low, you may well be able to reduce the brightness of your screen. Not only will it use less power or battery power, but it may also be more comfortable for you to use over a long period of time. There are other elements of your system, of course, that use power if you're still using a device with rotating hard disks, which most of us still are at the time of recording this, that will use power as well. And of course, the device overall uses a small but noticeable amount of power. Now, depending on your particular device, there are probably at least one or two ways of adjusting the brightness of the screen. But within Windows 10 itself, there are a couple of settings to look at straight away. I'm going to go into the system option in settings. And I'm going to go to power and sleep. The settings we're looking at here are not part of power plans. Or should I say, if we change these settings, they won't change any power plans. I'm going to come to power plans a little bit later on. These are sort of one-off point settings at any time. I could change, for instance, the screen setting here. When plugged in, turn off after five minutes. Now, this device is a plugged in device. It's not a battery powered device. And this says that after five minutes of non-use, my screen will switch off. It will just blank out and that will save some power. Now, in addition, if I haven't used it after 15 minutes, my PC will go to sleep and most of the other usage of power will also stop. Not all of it because the PC hasn't actually shut down. What happens is that anything that doesn't need to be running is not run. Now normally the way that I would wake this up would be for instance by just touching the power button. But exactly what you need to do will very much depend on the type of your device and the particular instance of your device. With some devices, pressing the power button is the way that you wake it up. With others, you may, for example, just need to move the mouse to wake it up. So if at any one time I want to change this and say, well, I'm a bit fed up with my screen going off as quickly as that, I want to change it, I could change it to only go off after 20 minutes. If I increase the time that the screen will stay on if I'm not using the device without actually blanking its display to a figure greater than the sleep figure, then the sleep figure will be increased to be the same. So I'm going to put it back to five minutes because I'm using this machine pretty much all the time during the day, so it really gets five minutes without any use. So be aware of those two particular settings and bear those in mind again when we're looking at power plans in just a moment. Next we're going to take a look at the use of the power button. So I'm going to click on additional power settings. That takes us into one of the options available from control panel. This page is actually the page where I can choose or customize power plans. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. What I want to do is to choose this option. Choose what the power buttons do. A very good proportion of what I'm covering in this section is very dependent on exactly what the features of your device are. And the settings here relate to two buttons, a power button and a sleep button. 
The device I'm using here only has a power button, many devices do. But this is where you control what happens when you press the power button. Now note that when I press the power button, and this is of course what happens when the machine's actually on, it shuts down. But there are several other things that I could do instead. One of them is to do nothing, which means that if I hit the power button I'm not going to accidentally switch it off. I can also put it to sleep, and I can also hibernate. Hibernate is a very important setting for a device, particularly a battery powered device, because unlike sleep, which still uses some power. Hibernate doesn't still use power, but it doesn't shut down either. What happens is the device stores its current state normally on your hard drive, and if a device is hibernated, and then you unhibernate it, you give it a bit of a spring treatment and wake it up, normally by hitting the power button, it will start up much more quickly than it does from cold, from shut down. So if, for example, you're using a laptop a lot and you want to be able to get it to start up very quickly, much more quickly than starting up from cold, you might choose to use hibernate rather than sleep as your option for when you're not actually using it. Now I use laptops quite a bit and I do tend to shut them down rather than hibernate them. But if you do want a faster start up, hibernate is a good option. Note the final option here, turn off the display. If you have a sleep button, then you can set the sleep button accordingly as well. Now if you like the idea of the hibernate option, note that on my device, hibernate show in power menu. This little checkbox here isn't ticked. This is not a battery powered device, so I don't have the same issues with power. But if you want to be able to hibernate from the start button on the start menu, if you check this box, you will see hibernate appear as one of the options on the shutdown menu. Let's look now at the previous control panel page, which lists the power plans that are available on this device. Usually, you will have three power plans, which will be balanced, power saver and high performance and very often at least one alternative plan uh, which is provided by the manufacturer of the device. I'm using a Samsung PC here and the fourth plan that I have is the Samsung Optimized plan. I currently have this device set up with a power saver plan in force and if I want to choose an alternative plan, straightforward enough, supposing I go for balanced all I need to do is select it. And if I want to see the settings for any one of the plans, say for instance this balance plan, if I click on change plan settings, I can see the settings. I've already explained the turn off the display and put the computer to sleep settings. If you're using a device with a battery, you'll actually see two columns here. One column for on battery settings and one column for plugged in settings. So the way in which the turn off display and put the computer to sleep work, or more specifically the time intervals involved, are very likely to be set differently depending on whether you're currently running on battery or whether you're running with the device plugged in. Generally speaking, of course, if you're running on battery, you're going to tend to turn things off more quickly than you would if you were plugged in. Very often with a plugged in device, one or more of the settings will be set to never. So if you want to change a particular setting, so let's suppose that in this particular plan, the balance plan, I want to turn off the display after 20 minutes instead of 10. All I need to do is click on Save Changes. I've now changed that plan. Let me go back into the plan again. And if I decide later on that I want to go back to the original setting, I've got a Restore Default setting here, which will put it back to its original setting. And of course things then are back the way that they were. So now would be a good time for you to look at the available power plans, to choose the one that's most appropriate for your device and your usage, and bear in mind that you can change those settings. Let me just go back into those plan settings one more time. One of the options here is change advanced power settings. And although I'm not going to go into this in detail now, because we could spend a lot of time on this, 
If you have issues with power management, there are many, many settings that you can change here. So for the currently selected plan balance, these are the settings. So for instance, turn off hard disk after setting 20 minutes. But I can also do things such as access what the power buttons do and what the lid does if there is a lid on your device. And then you have multimedia settings as well, things like when sharing media, when playing video. As I say, I'm not going to go into these now, but if power settings are important to you, they're there. You can choose an alternative plan to change the advanced settings for. And you also have a button here to restore plan defaults for the selected plan. So that's the advanced settings. And finally, let's look at creating a custom power plan. Back at the Power Options page in Control Panel, one of the other options on the left there is Create a Power Plan. You create a power plan based on one of the existing standard plans. So let's create one based on Balanced, and I'm going to call it Toby Plan A. Click on Next. And now I can go in and change the settings that I want to change. So for instance, let's say I'm going to turn the display off after 15 and put the computer to sleep. Never. Click on Create. And there's Toby Plan A ready for me to use. Now note that my Plan A is applied. If I subsequently want to delete that, all I need to do is to select one of the other plans. So for instance, let me apply balanced again. I need to make sure that Toby Plan A isn't in use if I want to delete it. But if I select balanced, but click on change plan settings for Toby Plan A, one of the options is delete this plan. I get a confirmation message. That plan is now deleted. That's it for this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If you need additional Windows 10 training, check out our complete playlist right over there. And if you need even more training, we have a nine hour course for Windows 10, which you can get by clicking down there. And if you like this video, be sure to like and comment below. And I'll see you next week with additional videos.